Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Mo ICT. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple battle ship type of game in Windows Form. Uh, this tutorial will be uh, slightly different than the usual games that we make. So let's just take a quick look at this game. Yeah, so um, in the beginning, as you can see, the enemy has picked three different locations. So we put inside the debug console uh, where we can actually see which location the enemy has picked. Okay, so first thing first we need to do is it tells you click on three different locations above to start. So let's click on these three just randomly and then uh, the attack uh, part will become active. So now uh, you can pick a uh, attack position from the top drop down. So I can pick a location that's from all of them. So I can't really click on any one of them. Okay, that's because uh, I want to make the game slightly more strategic. So you can sort of just go through... Um, a combo box and pick the locations that you want so let's say for example if I just pick a random one not the ones from the list here so I think the enemy picked a3 d3 and c4 so if I pick a2 you can use it shows a little cross and then the enemy picked w1 so I did pick w1 as one of my positions so that right now is sunk one of my battleships there so now if I go and pick a3 okay and this time around the enemy moved to Z1 okay so we still got um, three rounds each to go uh, so I could pick another one I pick W2 took a miss I did a miss as well if I go to D3 okay so see the animation uh, sorry the image changes there to the fire one instead of the miss one so if I go to say D2 okay so right now uh, we both got two damages and then we haven't got the third one so right now the game has drawn so you have got three different conditions in the game you can win lose or draw okay and then as soon as you click ok it will restart everything so you'll have to pick three different locations again the AI will uh, pick three different locations as well and then obviously off you go back to playing the game uh, from start again so we're going to be making this game inside of Windows Form application using C Sharp programming. Uh, to begin, uh, download the game assets from the link. So you can download the background, the fire image and the miss image. So the background's got the grid on it where we're going to be putting all of the buttons in. Okay, so with those downloaded, uh, let's go and make a new project. So create a new project. So I got my I, I got this uh, Windows form in my recent template. So I'm just gonna click on that. If you don't have it there, you can just search for Windows form. Just make sure it's .NET Framework. Okay. So battleship game Windows form more ICT. Okay, then. so to begin let's change the title on this one okay that's the title now let's just change the height and the width so we're going to look for 1080 by 625 okay so that's going to be the height and the width of this okay so now what we can do here is go to the background image and we're going to import all the images from the pictures that we downloaded earlier. So I've downloaded and extracted them in here. So I can select all, click open, select the background from the list and then click OK. So if it comes up like this, that's fine because right now the background image layout is set to tile. So we're going to set that to stretch. So it stretches over. Um, there's quite a lot of GUI stuff to handle, so um, just be patient and make sure you don't accidentally double click on stuff. So if you do, just uh, either you can delete the uh, object and add a new one, or you can say undo. But sometimes when you do a undo in Visual Studio, especially in Windows Form, it kind of gets a bit funny and it might undo the entire process. So just be careful. Okay, so a couple of things that we're going to need first is we're going to need a label. So I'm just going to take one label and then 
we'll start by um, editing it first all right so so this one let's start with the name so we say txt player so this is going to show the player score in the background to go to web section and go to transparent because this background image is part of the form it's the background of the form this is why we can get the background working with the label otherwise if it was just a picture box the background wouldn't work okay so let's go to bold 16 and then slightly bigger so go to four color and then we're going to change the four color to white so you can read it better on here all right so i'm just going to add the zero zero to this so that's going to be the the player score text or so this is where if the player wins around we're going to update it here so i'm just going to hold control and drag that over to the enemy okay so that here instead of level one we're going to change that to txt enemy okay so we have got your txt player there and you've got your txt enemy there okay um we're going to make one right here so i'm just going to drag it again so type in txt rounds here so this is going to show how many rounds we played so far and how many rounds are left so say round one so yeah so it's round 10 and then nine you know and so on okay i'm just going to drag this one in there okay and i might make this one slightly bigger because that's the enemy move so i'm just going to name this one a just to see what it looks like you might make it slightly bigger there see about 18 yeah okay so i'm just gonna drag the rounds one here so this is the part where we sort of give help information to the player so to, uh, name this one txt help uh, we're gonna make it smaller, so we're gonna make it like twelve, Maybe like a light green color. Yeah. So type in here. So. Uh, what we're saying here is that uh, click on three different uh, locations from above to start. So we can move the slide here. Uh, this is going to change between when we have selected all the buttons and then when we are ready to attack from the combo box as well. So speaking of combo boxes, let's add the combo box here. Size it up. Okay. So in the combo box options, we're going to have to change a few. So first of all, let's name this one enemy location list box. So we can sort of see where that being used in the C sharp code. And then we're also going to say here is drop down style to drop down list. Okay, and uh, drop down width will change that to like 95 so yeah it kind of stays within that little boundary there we can also we have got control over the font size as well so we can change that to 16 so it kind of matches the rest of the game uh, you have got option to change the back color so i think the back color we're going to change it to so in the back color just change it to pale green okay so kind of a little bit matches the position that it's in there okay so we named it we have um, okay that's fine so now let's add a button one of many okay so this is going to be for the attack so whenever um we are ready to start attacking um, enemy locations. So say BTN attack. Change the font to is it twelve. And then uh, space there. Attack. 
So it's going to be disabled in the beginning through the code. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's uh, make lots of copies of this button. So what we're going to do is we're, going to, we're just going to make one copy of the and then let's place it somewhere here. Right. First. Then. You can try and arrange it so it's middle of the grid. Let me do copy it. Yeah. Right, so let's go four, and then it becomes slightly easier. So then you can hold shift, click on them, and then you can control and drag the four under. Do that again. And then do that again. Okay, so once we go all four grids filled I'm just gonna select all of them from the grid don't want any round so then hold control and then drag it over to this side so now it comes down to naming them so as you can see you've got uh, W X Y Z A B C D and then you got the one two three four that's the the way the grid works it's gonna be W one two three four X one X two X three X four and then so on and so forth and same for the enemy so we need to name and change the text of these accordingly. So let's do that. I think I might have moved the attack button here by mistake instead of copying it. It's okay. Copy, copy, copy it. No. So that's fine to make this one slightly smaller. There you go. All right. So let's start naming them now. So this one's going to be W1. So we need two, W3, W4. X one is two is three is four Y one Y two Y three Y four. So we're still in the names. Uh, then Z one Z two Z three Z four. Okay, let's do the enemy names here first. So A one two three. So the reason I've done the names first is because um, if I had to go back to the properties and change the text and then come back again, that's a bit long. So I find an easier way to do that is once you have the text selected, it kind of stays selected for all of them. So we don't have to go look for it so we can just change it quickly. So with the cap lock on, let's go change them.
So let's go to the enemy side. Accidentally pressed F12 instead of um, CP. Stop that there. So one of the other things that we need to do for this game right now is to select all of the buttons here. So make sure you select it all. Uh, let's go and change the back color to white first. So that's that. That was nice. And then there's a background image layout. So right now it's set to tile. We want to set it to stretch because we're going to add the fire and the cross um image to the background of these buttons so at that time we don't want it to sort of look like it's you know not stretching properly inside the buttons okay all right then so right now what we're gonna need is a timer so let me just put a timer in here so enemy play timer Okay, so enable set to false, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna change the interval to a thousand because we want it to only tick once a second. All right, so um, let's go and start adding some of the events for this game. So first thing first is the enemy play timer. So, so let's say enemy play timer event, so we know what it is. There might be quite a few of them inside of this. All right, so Another one is going to be for this button here. So we can say attack button event, like so. So sometimes it's best to just name it as obvious as possible so that way when you're reading the code, you know exactly which parts are uh, linked to where. So then we're going to select all of these. So uh, we're going to link them all to one event. Okay, so in, and inside the event, we're going to sort of identify which button the event is being triggered from. Okay, so player position buttons event. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to need two separate um, functions here uh, on top of the events that we have made. So one is going to be private void. Let's do a restart game here. Okay. So this is basically going to load up all the default functions and functionalities that we need for this game. And another one we're going to need is enemy location picker. Okay, so this function is going to run and the enemy is going to basically go and select three different locations from its own boxes. And we should be able to see them inside the debug. Oh. Uh, so to do that, we actually need to use the diagnostics. So we're going to write here using system diagnostics here, right? So we can use the uh, debug dot right line to see inside the console window. Otherwise, um, it won't show. Okay, so these are the namespaces. So this, um, obviously we're not using all of them, but we're going to be using some of them. But you know, by default, Visual Studio sort of adds all of them. So you can add or remove any one of them that you want. But I would say unless you know a lot about them, um, you know, just let them be. Okay, so let's go and add the variable for this game. So 
So first thing first is we're going to do a list of buttons. So set button. Okay, yeah, so player position buttons go. Okay. And another list of button. And this is gonna be enemy. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to name all the buttons here inside the player location and all the buttons here inside the enemy location. So we're going to be using both locations to make this game work and communicate between the player moves and the enemy moves. Okay, so let's do a random. Um, so just we need um, obviously this is going to help us to randomly pick a and for the enemy to randomly pick a location from the player. So, you know, this is like the very basic type of uh, against the computer. So you're kind of playing against a random number. So let's go to int, say total ships equals three. So it's got 10 rounds. Um, so, so player score and enemy score. I'm going to link them to the labels appropriate there. Okay, so these are the variables we need at the moment. Uh, let's go and link the restart game function here. So what we're going to do now is let's get started on the restart game function first, right? So we'll say player position buttons equals new list, right? So let's do a curly bracket here. Inside of this, we're going to um, define all the buttons that belong to the player positions, right? So let's say W1, W4, X1, X2, X3, X4, Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4, Red1, Red2, Red3, and Red4. Okay, and next thing is enemy position buttons equals new list as well. Do the curly brackets and inside the curly brackets, we need to define the enemy button. So, A1, uh, B1, two, B3, B4, okay. So, the reason I'm manually doing this is because I find it quite easier to sort of keep track of what I'm doing in the game. This is the restart game function. So when the game starts, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of empty out everything that's inside this box, combo box here. So the combo box is called the enemy location list box. Yeah. The items. Okay. To clear. So I'm going to clear everything out first. Okay. And then we're going to re-enter all the other stuff to it. So then my location picker. It's just a text to null, so we don't want any text to show up just yet. Text to help. That's going to change as well. So we're going to say here, click on. Off to start. So when the game starts, it's just going to change text to that and then we're going to change it again later on once the three locations were picked so this part is important okay so um we're going to run a for loop to run through all the enemy positions and then to populate the box as well as um you know uh, resetting the enemy locations there as well okay so let's go and run a for int loop so for in loop between a Enemy position buttons dot count. So the total number of buttons that are inside of that. So enemy position buttons and then I. So the I is iterating through all the numbers. So until it reaches the very end. So the I is interchangeable number. So we can go and change properties of these buttons through this I. Okay, so we're going to say the enabled is equals to true. Okay, 
Just gonna copy that and it becomes a lot easier for me to type. And then say dot tag is, is null. So um, the idea behind this game is when an enemy selects a location, we tag it to the enemy ship. Right, so that's how we sort of identify which ones they actually selected. So we need to nullify all of them first. So we need to get rid of all the tags first. Right, and then I'm gonna say dot back color equals color dot white. Okay, so then remove the background image to null. Okay, and then uh, we're also going to add um, to the enemy list. So enemy list box dot items dot add. Okay, enemy position i dot text. If we were to just run this now, okay, so as you can see, you've got all these A's, and then as soon as you click on that, you're going to get all of them being populated here. So we've got all the locations of the enemy being populated inside this box. Okay. Cool. Right, so let's run a, another for loop. This time we're going to run it for the player. Position. So I'll say layer position buttons dot count. Okay. So similar thing to before again. Right. So just in case some of them has been disabled during the gameplay, we need to re-enable them again. Okay. Select the enabled as well. So tag to no but color to color to white and then background image to null as well okay so let's go and um, reset those variables back to where they were so say Player score equals zero. Enemy score to zero. Rand set to ten. Total ships set to three. Txt plan text equals. Uh, not bad. So player score dot two string. So it's going to take the integer player score and then convert it into a string. And then that text is going to give to same thing again to a string. I think um, did we name this one? No, we did not. So this is going to be called enemy move, right? So okay, so I don't think I named it. Yeah, we haven't. Um. It's okay, uh, this can be called uh, enemy move. So this is where we're going to see which uh, location did the enemy pick from the player's um, location, right? So let's just say here, enemy move dot text. Just set it to A1 for now. So we're going to change the attack button. So ETM attack dot enabled to false because we don't want the player to be able to attack the enemy just yet. Okay. And then obviously we're going to run the enemy location picker. Okay, so we want the um, enemy to sort of pick the location that it wants at this point. Okay, so once it does all of this, uh, okay, it's fine. Okay, let's go to the enemy location picker now. So the enemy location picker, we're going to run a for loop that's basically going to say, you know, here are three choices, make those three choices. And once you have made them, we're going to tag some of these buttons to say enemy ships, right? So you can pick any random three from here. Okay, so let's run that. So say I, because then if I is less than three, right? Uh, what we want to do is we want to say, it, is there like a local um, integer called index? equals um, next so we're just going to basically 
enemy position buttons don't count, right? So I'm just going to um, generate a random number between how many buttons are available inside the enemy location, right? So let's say here if um, enemy position buttons index, right? Um, but enable these equals equals true. So basically, once if the button is enabled and we haven't particularly picked this button yet, because don't forget it's going to pick three buttons, so we don't want it to pick the same button twice, right? So although it's running in a loop, it's going to go through all the buttons and you can pick three different ones. Okay, so let's say for example, so we after is a string. Going to say look for the tag here. So say tag is still not right. So the button will have to be enabled, and it doesn't. Uh, the tag needs to be empty. If that's so, then we can simply say here index dot tag is equals to enemy ship. Okay. So we're gonna tag the button. So if these two conditions are true, then we tag this button here, and then lastly we say debug dot right line. Okay, so we're going to say enemy position here. So plus position dot text. Okay, so whatever is selected, so whenever that selected it, then it goes through that. And then if it doesn't, we just copy this, right? So if we bump into something that is enabled but that it has a tag then we just want to run the random number again. Okay, so we're just gonna pick another, another one until it gets to three. It comes up in the debug log. Okay, so there we have it. So I can make this one bigger, I don't know. I don't think I can. But in here is selected B1, D2 and A1. Okay, so we got three positions selected. All right, so if I stop this now and run it again, Okay, so this time we selected B1, A1, and C3. Okay, so let's do the player position pick. Right, so here we will say if say total ships is still greater than zero, so we the total ships that we have, so we can only pick three ships. So if the total ships are to, uh, zero, then say let's say var button equals. This one should be a capital B. Okay, so we're creating a local variable called button, and then we're just going to identify the sender of that event. So whichever button that was clicked to send it, we're going to identify. So this one uh, is going to say button enable to say, for example, false. So we're going to disable that particular button. Turn the tag oh. equal to player ship. So we're going to tag the button. So similar way that we've done with the enemies, uh, but in this case we're going to change the button to back color to orange. Okay, so it's a way for us to identify which buttons that we have selected. Okay, and then we'll say total ships minus equals one. All right, and of course if we say if total ships is equals equals zero. At this point, we're going to say VTM attack is oh, enabled is equal to true. So we want we want the attack button to be re-enabled again. Okay, and uh, we're going to change the back color to color dot red, and then. Four color to color door white, so it's easier to read the text. So you know, red and black doesn't usually help most of the time. All right, so let's say help text. We're going to change it now. So we're going to say second instruction for this game is going to be now pick the attack position from the drop down. Okay. So we can do that. 
let's go have a, have a board here so right now the attack button is disabled let's say i want to pick these three so I'll see it changes to orange and then i cannot click it again all right so right now i've picked three the help text have changed here now pick three you know now pick the attack position from the drop down enemy has selected these positions i've selected mine and now i can go find all the locations from there and we just need to figure out how to start attacking him okay so let's do the attack button event so in this in this one where we're going to be selecting a value from this list box uh, so this combo box and then we're going to click on the attack to actually attack position for the enemy okay so first thing first is we're going to check for a if statement so we're going to say if enemy location this box dot text right is not equals to empty so if it's not empty right so at the moment it's empty so if it's not empty then we can do something if it is right then we can say here is message box dot show so let's say and choose a location from and drop down first okay and then we'll give this one a title caption for the message box call information okay so choose a, a location from the drop down first and then so if you try that out now let's see what happens so say picked my three locations now i forgot to pick any location from there and I click ok attack so it doesn't know where to attack so this is a way for us to sort of be safe and to guide the user in the right way so it says information there so choose a location from the drop down first so we can then now choose a location so if i click that and then so see the message box doesn't show up okay all right so that's that done okay so let's find uh, how to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, local variable called attack position right so so in this one uh, we're going to save whatever text that is selected by the player so if it's like a b1 a1 you know c1 so we're going to save it in here okay but text dot to lower okay the reason we're using the lower is because what we want to do is we want to compare this to the names of these buttons so that's why we use the capital here well we use the capital here for simply for the display but because the names are in lowercase right okay so we can sort of identify them by using the two lower so whatever text is selected here is going to format it into a lowercase right and um, lists uh, lists really make it a lot easier for us to find objects inside of them so this is why we um, prefer to use lists than arrays in arrays if we had all these buttons and we had to find a specific button we'd have to run a loop to find the name of it and then uh, do something with that but inside a list we can simply find the object's name matching the attack position in one line and let me show you how that works so we're going to create an integer here called index right so and this is going to just store a number and what we're interested in is what number is that name at right so what, whatever name that is selected here we want to find out what number is that name at right so say enemy position buttons dot find index right okay so inside of this function we can say a so a is like a, a local variable okay so a and then what we're interested in is a name right so we just want to find the names and then we we want to check is if names are equals equals the attack position that's selected here okay okay so it's just going to save it there and then now we can do like a if statement to check what we want to do with it right, so say if say if dot index is um so index is enabled first of all right so we haven't attacked this position before right so it's still enabled and 
round is still greater than zero so we still have more rounds to play okay so first thing first is let's reduce one from the round because then this run would have gone um, text around text equals so update the rounds now okay and then inside of here we can check with another if and else statement okay so if now the if the object that we selected right matches a tag okay so say any position um, buttons dot index the same index that we created earlier just done this so much easier all right so then say tag equals equals enemy ship so if the tag matches to the enemy ship then we can do the following so we can say here next i'm actually just going to copy this whole thing and start typing all over again enable to false so we're going to disable that button which we attacked and um, dot background image is equals to properties dot resources dot fire icon so we have attacked it and you know we blew up the ship okay dot back color is going to be oh, back color is going to be color equals dark blue so just change it to dark blue so it stands out a little bit so we say player score is plus equals one. So we add one to the player score because the player has, you know, obviously attacked an enemy and blew up the ship, right? Um, let's update the player score text. So txt player dot text equals. Um, oh, we don't need that. Um, so so player score dot two string. Okay and right after we do that what we want to do is after our move we want the enemy to make their move onto our section of the game okay so enemy play timer dot start so the enemy play timer has to start all right and of course we also have to check if the position that we attacked doesn't match the enemy ship so we attacked an empty position so I'm just going to copy these over. So instead of fire icon, we're going to say miss icon here. So we're going to change it back to disable again. Change that to dark blue, which is fine. And then uh, we're also going to change the enemy play timer to start. So, so let's go and try that. So we go pick three different locations. Attack buttons happens to be enabled uh, okay so if i check a1 see so right now it finds a1 there if i pick d3 it finds d3 c2 okay and then i cannot click on the button twice so see the rounds is going down as well okay so d1 d1 right so even if i click on it again because it's not enabled at the moment so it gets disabled as soon as you click on it okay uh, so as soon as you select it so b2 okay so uh, you know uh, finding indexes that's just a lifesaver and it saves so much time from doing unnecessary loops all right that's working as intended um okay so i think we only have one more function left to go which is the enemy play timer Okay, so inside this function um, what we're going to do is first of all as soon as the function runs we're going to reduce one from the round okay so it's fine then txt rounds text equals so we update that there all right um let's do another int index Okay, so what we're going to do is inside of this um, index, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random number between the player positions. Okay, so say player position buttons, right, dot count. So the number of player position is available there. We're going to select it there. Okay, so say for example, if and then we just do a string casting here, we're going to check the tags. So say if 
yeah, position here and then check for index all right index dot tag like so is equals equals player ship so if you find the player ship okay whatever number that's generated there then what we're going to do is say background image equals properties dot resources dot fire icon so you know blow up the ship um and then we move dot text because we do want to update which um what move the enemy took right after okay dot text is equal to player uh, index dot text so we're just going to take the name of that one okay and then we will do is uh, enable to fall so we disable that button change the back color to dark blue okay and then what we also want to do is we want to remove that um button that's found here from the index right so from the actual um, list the reason we want to do that is because then that way we can safely assume that ai is not going to pick the same button twice because we're running a random number it's not doing any uh, sort of calculations or anything like that so this is one of the safest ways that we can say okay you know if this button doesn't exist here then obviously there's no way that random number is going to be calculated there okay so let's go and remove that so say let us button to remove at right index so we're going to remove the index from there so and then say enemy school so the plus equals one so enemy has scored there txt enemy text we can update that to the string and then we will stop the enemy timer here so as soon as all of these are satisfied the timer doesn't need to run anymore okay uh, we need to do the similar thing for l what we're going to do here is we're still going to remove that let's change a few things here so this is going to be the miss icon here but we're also going to change that that's fine that's fine and then we're also going to remove that as well but we also uh, don't need to add anything to the score but we just need to stop the timer back here okay so even if it hits or misses we still need to remove it from the list right Um, I think I think it would be best to have them inside of the if statement here because if we check an if statement so that way we have a okay so I'll say player position buttons dot count so if you say zero and then obviously we also need to check runs because otherwise it's not going to it's going to keep running even if runs go below zero so I'll say round is still greater than zero so we still have more run to play right so I can highlight all of these and put them inside this if statement here. Uh, that's fine. So uh, now we need to figure out a way to determine the win lose. I think we just run this for now. Let's see. So I select these three. Okay. So I have to attack first. So the enemy has selected their position. So I select B2. Okay. And then see. So the enemy has randomly selected X3. So if I go to A1, so it randomly selected Z2 because the Z2 matches with my position. So that came up with the fire icon. Okay. So if I go to A2, so now it randomly selected Z3. B4, it selected W2. So if I select like let's say D2 now. Okay, so both of us have two scores right so and the round has ended right now so we have played our five um rounds each um what we want to do is this game right now would be a draw okay so it's like a perfect example of um what we actually need to do next so it's kind of nice when it when things work out like that so we have to have a way of um finding how to win how to lose and the draw okay so let's go here and say if Round is less than one, so, okay. Or if um, 
enemy score is greater than two, so enemies got all three. Or player score is greater than two, so players got all three. So we're putting inside this time up this unit kind of ticks and it's, uh, whenever the enemy is making this move we can sort of check the score with it as well okay so say if right so if say player score is greater than enemy score at this point uh, any one time any of these matches right message box to show okay so I'll say you win right and then put a comma here and then this is for the title for the uh, message box okay and then we rest after we say that uh, once the player clicks okay we can restart the game so we're just going to copy these two lines because they're going to be prominent for the next view so let's do it else if here and inside the else if we're going to say if enemy score is greater than the player score So instead of here we're going to paste that and then the, the AI can sort of you know taunt the player so you can say ha ha I sunk, oh, sunk your bow ship okay so and then obviously lost so it show the lost um, title on there and then we need to need one for the draw so we can say else if again so at this point if um, enemy score equals equals player score right then we run that again and say draw and say here okay so just say no one wins this game okay so right now this is um these if statements here are inside of the enemy play timer event okay so let's go and have a go at this game Right, so I'm going to go pick three. Right, the enemies picked their three. I'm just going to go randomly pick a location. Good. Let's go and see if I can. I think first thing first, I'll check if I can win. Okay, got that location there. D1. Okay, got that location as well. And then the last one is going to be D3. Okay, so D. Oh, no, sorry, A3. I still win. Okay. So, oh yeah, that one was A3, not D3. Alright, so it shows me that I win. If I click OK, it should restart the game again. Okay, so I can't really, you know, do anything else. I pick my three numbers again. As you can see, it picked three new numbers, so D1, B1, and B2. So let's go and attack D1. Okay, so move to W2. Let's go attack B1. Okay, and then let's go attack B2. So see, all three numbers are correct. Click OK again. So this time I'm just going to pick three. So this one is a D4, C4, and B2. I'm going to try and ignore that. Let's see if I can let the AI win. Okay, and Another one, B4, B4. Okay. Might end up having a draw here or something like that, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I lost, so he um, attacked one of my ships. So I say, haha, I sunk you about our ship, and then click OK. So hopefully you guys had fun with this one and I will see you in the next one.